Do you want to build muscle and burn fat? Do you want to have healthier looking skin? Do you want to have a robust immune system? Do you want to have great emotional health and mental clarity? Sleep is the answer to all of these. Sleep is one of the greatest health secrets of all time and more and more people are suffering from poor sleep every day due to the stressors of life, noise pollution, light pollution, food quality, and many more things. Well, what if there was a way to sleep like a baby again and gain all the amazing health benefits that come with great sleep? Introducing DSIP, Delta Sleep Inducing Peptide, a natural peptide that is found in large concentrations of mother's milk. This fascinating molecule works on the brain to promote deep and restorative sleep. Let's take a deep dive into DSIP while I'll be sharing all my discoveries and research on this fascinating molecule. Before I begin with this video, I must have a disclaimer that this video is for purely educational reasons. I'm not a doctor. Nothing in this video should be taken as health advice. For any health concerns, please seek out a licensed professional and a licensed physician or doctor. By watching this video, you agree to the terms. Now let's get straight into this video. So what is this peptide? DSIP stands for Delta Sleep Inducing Peptide and a similar peptide is found in large concentrations of mother's milk, which is the reason why babies sleep so well, one of the reasons. And this peptide addresses different sleep aspects and sleep hygiene. Additionally, it helps reset your circadian rhythm clock, which is pretty much your sleep and wake cycle or how your body goes to bed and wake up. Additionally, it supports the nervous system and the hormonal system. So it's a pretty exciting peptide of how it works in the body. So how does DSIP work? DSIP works by targeting different parts of the brain and the brain stem that are linked to sleep and relaxation. It helps influence and interact with the hormones melatonin and serotonin. Additionally, the neurotransmitter GABA, which all of these are very important for falling asleep and staying asleep. Additionally, DSIP has been shown to actually increase endocrine functions or hormonal functions during sleep, resulting in higher releases of thyroid hormone, growth hormone, and even testosterone. Because during sleep, you actually get a large increase or release of many different hormones. So what are the research benefits of DSIP? First, it improves sleep. It helps reset their circadian rhythm clock or reset your sleep and wake cycle has been shown to help reduce chronic pain, to help with stress, to help with depression. Additionally, it's been related to helping with withdrawal symptoms from opioid and alcohol because it does work on GABA. And that is pretty cool how we're now seeing peptides that can potentially help with very addictive behaviors. So what are the research side effects of DSIP? From what I've seen, first is actually causing disturbance in sleep. So the opposite effect of what DSIP is used for, I think this is because of two reasons. The first reason is either maybe too high of a dose, the wrong timing, which you're gonna later learn about. Additionally, DSIP is used to reset a circadian rhythm clock or to reset your sleep and wake cycle. So once the sleep is stable, I believe there's no need for the DSIP and just peptides in general, which happened to me, which I believe I was using too high of a dose. And additionally, once my sleep did stabilize, I was using it and that's why I think I was getting worse sleep. And the last main side effects I've seen, which is more on the rare side, is headache and nausea. So what is the research dosing and cycling? So from studying the best peptide experts and just the peptide community, I've seen anywhere from 100 to 300 micrograms every day as a loading phase. And then once the sleep is stabilized to reduce down to anywhere from 50 to 100 micrograms or half of the loading phase one time weekly. So a big part of it determines on their response. So if the sleep is still not stable, they may need to have a continual loading phase. This is very similar to the peptide melanotan, which is a tanning peptide. You pretty much load up until you hit the desired result and then reduce down to stabilize. And important to know, it's best to take this peptide three hours before sleep. And that's a mistake I made where I did it right before bed. But from the research and from studying, it says three hours before bed is the most ideal spot. So to summarize it, anywhere from 100 to 300 micrograms daily for a loading phase three hours before bed. Once sleep is stabilizing, reduce the dose half or less depending on the response. As you can see, this peptide takes a little bit more playing around to really find the sweet spot. So what are some other peptides I would take with DSIP? 
First would be a combination of a GHRH with a GHRP. So a peptide that creates growth hormone and one that releases it. My favorite combination is ipirelin, which is a GHRP, with testosterone, which is GHRH. And the reason why is that growth hormone peptides are known for increasing sleep quality. So DSIP with more growth hormone, I can see be very beneficial. Next peptide, which is actually a bioregulator, would be epithalon. Epithalon has been leaked to actually restoring melatonin levels in the individual. Next peptide would be a kind of combination of peptides. That would be BPC-157, TP-500, and GHKKU, which now is often called the GLOW combo, but these are just some amazing healing peptides and overall will indirectly help with sleep and recovery. And I'm thinking if I'm using DSIP, I probably want to recover and sleep. So adding in some recovery peptides can be very powerful. Next would be Kiss Peptin 10. This is especially if the researcher's goal is to increase testosterone because DSIP has been linked to increasing testosterone in the night or actually increasing luteinizing hormone and FSH, which those are important for increasing testosterone. And Kiss Peptin 10 works in a very similar way. So I think together it could be powerful. And lastly, it would either be PEG MGF or IGF-1 LR3 or both of them because these peptides really focus on growth and recovery. So I'm thinking another reason why researchers may use DSIP is just for recovery and muscle growth because sleep is super important for building muscle. So those two peptides, PEG, MGF, and IGF-1 LR3 are very potent for recovery and building muscle. So here are some supplements I would take with DSIP. First would be magnesium. Magnesium is an amazing mineral that has amazing benefits when it comes to sleep, your nervous system, your skin, and there are many different types of magnesium. I think all types can be beneficial, but especially magnesium glycinate before bed has a faster acting, more relaxation effect on the body. Next would be reishi mushroom. Reishi mushroom is amazing at reducing stress and has a lot of amazing spiritual benefits. So combine that with DSIP could be powerful. Additionally, next would be kava. I really enjoy kava tea or just the kava tincture. Kava is another amazing way to add more relaxation. This is more for helping to get into sleep. And additionally, kava is an amazing alternative to alcohol, which is another video I'll talk about. Next would be melatonin, but a very small amount. In my opinion, 0.1 to 0.3 milligrams is what is needed because melatonin, you just want a little bit just to kickstart the sleep cycle, not to rely on it. Next would be GABA or L-theanine. These are amazing just to help work on the different parts of the brain to help with relaxation. And finally, I've actually been playing around with this, is homeopic drops. So there's many different homeopic remedies that are super easy, super gentle, and they're very affordable. And I like it a lot because it just adds to the fire. It's just something else to add with because some things, for example, may not be beneficial for others. For example, I know l theanine before bed for me is not beneficial, but for others, it's amazing. But for me, the homeopathic drops have been beneficial, but for others, they needed something else. So these are just some ideas to think about. Here are some lifestyle tools to add to DSIP. The first would be light therapy. Huge into this. This is so powerful for starting your circadian rhythm to having a healthy sleep and wake cycle. So in the morning time, getting some kind of light and then in the evening time, protecting your eyes with blue light blocking glasses. And my favorite light hack is have a happy light in the morning or to use retimer glasses which shine blue and green light into your eyes. That is my favorite thing by far. But the best is obviously morning sunlight, but because of modern times, it's very difficult. So having some kind of morning light and then as well protecting your eyes at least an hour before bed from the blue light. Next would be the 10-3-3-1 rule. So 10 hours before bed, no caffeine. Three hours before bed, no food, no work. And one hour before bed, no blue light. Yes, that's a little bit hard to follow, but it's a nice kind of structure to have to really protect your sleep and it does work quite well. Next would be meditation, not only for helping with stress, but also if you don't sleep well, Oftentimes, I love meditating and I will meditate if I did not get the best sleep because, because they've shown that 30 minutes of meditation is equivalent to one hour of deep sleep. So it's kind of my little sleep pack where I'll use meditation if I need to recover. It's almost like a super nap. Next would be exercise and eating good foods, which are the foundation for good sleep. Another lifestyle tool would be warm soaks, ideally with magnesium before bed. And the reason why is that this will actually help cool off your body temperature, your core body temperature, which is critical for falling and staying asleep. Next would be some kind of earthing sheets. And I've actually been using mine for a couple months, really enjoy them. A very easy purchase to greatly increase your sleep quality. 
And also some basics, which I completely forgot about, is this cold, dark, and quiet. Very important for good sleep hygiene. And then some other biohacks. And as you can see, guys, there's a lot of different things I'm saying. So I'm, I just want to give you ideas, but these are all things that I personally do and I personally tested that work because I've tried so many different sleep things. But the last two things I want to throw on there, which are some cool biohacks that I really like, is first, the Fisher Wallace Stimulator, which is really cool. It uses an AC current to help stimulate different neurotransmitters, which is really important for sleep and stress. And lastly, the Pulsetto. And what this does is stimulates your vagus nerve and that will increase your HRV, which overall will have a huge impact on quality of life and on sleep. So what are the pros of DSIP? First, it's one of the only peptides that really targets sleep. Another pro, I like how it's naturally found in mother's milk. Another pro is that it has more of a holistic effect when it comes to sleep, as it helps with resetting, actually targeting your circadian rhythm clock. And additionally, not only does it help with sleep, it also has some additional hormonal benefits because it increases the quality of your sleep. So I just think this is a very cool peptide of how it works. And overall, it seems very well tolerated from my research anyways. So what are the cons of DSIP? I think the biggest con, and the only con, is that it takes more finessing to really find the sweet spot because there is a loading phase and then a maintenance phase. And for me, when I first started, I was getting great benefits and then actually my sleep got worse because I had a hard time actually figuring out how to stabilize the dose. But once I figure out the perfect dose, it was easy for me to continue, but it did take some playing around to really find that sweet spot. So what's my overall opinion of DSIP? I personally used and experimented with DSIP and I did gain some benefits, especially the first couple of nights I was sleeping quite heavy and quite long. But I did say that after that, my sleep actually got the worst, actually not worse, it actually decreased. And that is just because I needed to figure out the right dosing and the right frequency for me. But overall, I was very happy with the peptide. I think there's a lot of benefit and potential in this peptide, not only for sleep, but when it comes to hormones, when it comes to helping with withdrawal effects. Additionally, one thing I like a lot about this peptide, which I just learned, is that it can be done intranasally because of the molecule size. So it can be amazing if the researcher does not want to inject. So overall, I need to do more research on the peptide, but so far from my research and experiments, it does seem pretty promising. So if you guys want to master peptide therapy or just master this way of thinking and regenerating, I have two things. First, I recommend joining my Regen Academy. It's packed with information or building an awesome community or to check out my book, Peptides Made Simple. It's on Amazon. It took me a ton of time to make and I think it would really help you out. And as well, these are ways to support my channel. So if you think what I do is great and you want to see more of it, then you supporting me is the best way and I greatly appreciate that. So make sure to subscribe and like and maybe share this with anyone that needs to hear this video. Have an amazing day and stick around for future videos.